So welcome everybody to this session of the Hassel Family History Association. And in this session, we are looking at the lives of Susanna and William Shelley. That's Susanna Hassel and uh, William Shelley. And uh, I'm going to just share my screen briefly to give a bit of a background to the Hassel Family History Association. And I've got to learn to actually reverse this if I can, uh, because I think you're seeing uh, uh, not the slideshow, let's see from the beginning. And we'll we'll swap the presentation. How does that look? Is that okay? Yeah, that's good. All right. So um, this uh, slide is showing that the Hassel Family History Association has these uh, main purposes of fostering and disseminating research on the life and heritage of Roland and Elizabeth Hassel and their descendants, and also encouraging research on other uh, early settler families, uh, particularly those that were with whom the Hassels were associated uh, and their shared historic experiences in early Australia. And also looking at the insights uh, that this family legacy can bring to uh, contemporary cultural innovation in Australian society. It's a bit of the background to the association. And as most people are aware, Roland and Elizabeth had nine children eight of whom lived to adulthood and married and had their own children. And so we have eight family lines in association and we're having a series of online sessions to bring together relatives from these various family lines. And in this session, we're looking at Susanna and William uh, tonight on the 17th of September. Now, we know that there are eight children who married and had their own children. And in the case of Susanna and William, there's eight uh, children of what we might call the third generation. A lot of the, uh, what is known about Roland Elizabeth revolves around their early years uh, in Coventry uh, in England and then their uh, quite um, uh, tumultuous uh, period in Tahiti uh, with the LMS mission. There's much less coverage of the many years that they spent in Parramatta, Roland uh, for 22 years till his passing in 1820, and Elizabeth for um, 36 years till her passing in 1834. And it was the Parramatta years that their children uh, were raised and had families of their own. So we see that uh, the children were, were spaced maybe every two to three years uh, through, through the, the years of, of childbearing uh, of Elizabeth. Uh, and if today, looking at the life of Susanna, who incidentally was the longest lived of all the eight children. This is the passing of Roland. Susanna was age 14 when her father died and then the passing of her mother in 1834. The next bits of information that are coming on the screen are the marriages of the eight children. There's the famous triple wedding of 1819. And we're looking for Susanna. There's Thomas marrying, Eliza marrying, and Susanna marrying at the age of 21, married William Shelley. I think just one last, two, maybe two final marriages, Anne with Robert Campbell and then James. So there's eight marriages there. And this is the longevity of the children. Uh, apart from infant um, uh, Elizabeth, who uh, drowned at the age of two, the other children lived uh, between say 30 years and uh, 84 years. And so you see that five of the children died before the age of 40 and another four lived uh, between the ages of 60 and 84. And so Susanna, who died in 1890, was aged 84. Now, this is the grandchildren of Roland and Elizabeth. And, and the, uh, those of the grandchildren who were of Susanna are in blue. So you see that they're quite, for, for one thing, uh, none of these grandchildren got to see their grandfather, Roland, because he'd passed. 
And there were quite a few grandchildren born before the first of Susanna's children. But then, of course, there were eight. So we see them from 1828 through, I think, on the next page, maybe there might still be another one coming, Julius, in 1842. So that's eight children. And the passing of those same grandchildren was uh, from the years of 1842 um, through to 1922, the last of, the, of her children to pass away. So what we've got here is a picture of a, quite a large uh, family. Uh, and um, that's the family of Susanna that we are uh, looking at tonight. Uh, so, having introduced the family a little, I'm just going to speak in brief about some of the projects of the um, Hassel Family History Association. Uh, one is that we try to um, promote research and publication, and we'll see the book in the middle by Jean Stewart, uh, Roland Elizabeth Hassel. Uh, Jean is, is a descendant of Susanna. Um, she may not be online tonight, but she's instrumental in a lot of the research that we do have concerning Susanna and William. And looked up uh, online, there's, there's quite a few entries for Susanna. This is a website called Australian Royalty. Uh, and uh, it's got the Hassel family are certainly all listed there, but uh, it, in some cases, not too much detail. And, and Susanna is a case of that because there's not too much information available. But also there are, there are sites such as Find a Grave. Um, we have a second project called Hassel Heritage, where we try to find the resting places of uh, these early generations or any sites that might be uh, associated with them, uh, homesteads that are still in place, other uh, places that uh, uh, were associated with, with their, their, um, their lives. And so that's the Hassel Heritage Project. And the third is a genealogy project. And uh, what you see on screen is actually a shot uh, of the two um, figures in the middle there are, are William and Susanna and their eight children and then their 38 grandchildren. So we do have in this uh, session this evening some of the descendants of those 38 grandchildren who we'd like to hear from uh, as, as the session proceeds. And the fourth project is a transcription project because we have some uh, 8,000 pages of re family records that are in the, the State Library of New South Wales and we're uh, slowly uh, but persistently transcribing those so that they're made more widely available. And there are just a few letters of Susanna, I think, sprinkled through those papers. Now, the, one of the reasons that we're having these online sessions is to build awareness of a program that we're having next year in May. Uh, it's going to be in the south of, of Sydney based, um, well, there's a chance to go to Camden, Cobbety, Denby, uh, but the, the main programs are going to be at Middleton Grange, the Thomas Hassel School on Saturday the 6th, and also in the vicinity of Parramatta on Sunday the 7th. Um, there are other side tours as well. So we're trying to promote that uh, program. Um, and um, that's um, all I have to share on Susanna at this stage. And I know that Anne has rejoined us. Um, so, Anne, I've just given a little bit of an overview uh, of the family yes. background that we've given in other sessions as well. Yes. And I'd like yes. now to hand over to you and you can lead discussion, maybe introducing what, uh, what you know of Susanna and William and also uh, of your own family. And we know you do have some other um, distant relatives on, online tonight. Um, so let's just have some discussion and see what we can learn together about Susanna and William. Where would you like to start the conversation? Um, well, by saying that, I've managed to email the two who are in car parks and, and Shelley's just got that email. She's trying. Okay, the one in England. Um, and uh, so she's from the, um, what we would have called Uncle Norman's line, um, Norman Shelley's line. Uh, and the, yes, he married an American that's the American woman and they migrated back to England and that line has been there. Uh, but somehow she learned about us, which was great. Uh, and I've, my cousin, okay. The others, I just have to give up now. I mean, they ne they didn't say, yes, I'm going to join or anything when I've emailed them about it. So 
maybe they're not. So what I want to know, well, what I wanted to say is in a few publications, it claims that the original William Shelley, which is Susanna's father-in-law, um, was a reverend. No, definitely not. None of those on that missionary ship were, were ordained people. So sometimes people might pick up on that error because it is in some information. What we really want to know is James's death. Now, James, um, James Shelley's, because he would come and go uh, and, and, and leave another baby to be born, and he just completely disappeared. But on Graham's chart that he's just recently sent us, which is magnificent, it actually gives a date of death, and I really would like to know, Aline would like to know where that came from. Maggie's yeah, so I know a couple in, of rumours, that's all, where he In died. Jean Stewart's book, uh, it said no. that, that the whereabouts is not known. So yes. I reached online and I found on a number of websites that it's quite clear that it's 1922. Um, now, it's on Ancestry and other sites as well. It gives that date. Okay. Well, I guess Jean doesn't feel that's been confirmed or something because she's, she's very particular. But so, okay, well, we can work with that then, that there is, because we certainly haven't got any date on our on our, our work. Okay. Thanks for that answer. Um, yes. Well, Susan, it's, it seems that the girls, we, we know a lot less about the girls' lines because I watched... Um, the Anne Hassel one last time that was on recently, and they were a very small group too. And she was the youngest youngest of the girls, and this Susanna was the seventh out of the eight. Um, so there's a lot less. Oh, the other thing, though, I did want to say is in Jean's books and things, there is a, the few, the, sorry, the cemetery fancy thing there's a picture a photo of that in Jean's books and things uh, where he's buried in the old cemetery in Goulburn or the old old cemetery in Goulburn um and that's a nice photo with a nice fancy top but when I went to find it a few years ago it's definitely the top is broken so if there's some billionaire who wants to um give William Junior William Shelley Jr's the uh uh the a repair job that would be interesting uh, so I've got a photo of the broken one, uh, and I can could just read the writing on it because it covers Susanna and William and another another relative in in that same tomb. Hmm. But it's very distinctive. I had no trouble finding it once I got into the cemetery just by the look of it. Okay. So uh, what's happened really is that I guess with our family we spent most of our time researching and following the Shelley line and not the Hassel line. So I've been interested to, to join this Hassel Association and, and learn a whole lot more. Uh, but I, that's our focus has been much more. And they haven't done proudly like the Hassels. The Shelleys have had, they've had a few bad hiccups, I can assure you, and there's still some, some around, which is why you haven't got the whole family tree. I, what I do do is collect all the sort of births, deaths and marriages, names and dates of my cousins, children and grandchildren so that I've got that and that's not getting lost. Uh, and we tend to be small families quite often because the men have died um, young, like in their 40s, or uh, in case of my parents' divorce, so I'm, the, I'm an only child um, and uh, other th things like that. So uh, Susanna's family would be the last of the big families, I think. So well, I would be interested to know where you, these new faces I can see in two or three boxes, where you come in. Um, so my mum comes through and I come through, obviously, as a result of that. Alice Mary Shelley. Yes, and she was... Now you, I knew you'd ask me that, and I've, I've just, I've just, tra just travelled from Brisbane, uh, from Tassie to Brisbane, and I've got nothing with me. That's um, all right. What I'll do is I'll see if I can pop into my tree without losing you. So if I do, I'll come back. Hang on a sec. All right. Now will I be able to get her email and and names? 
um, after this, Graham, because I, you know, there's no name. I, I don't know the names of those two. And it's, and nor do I know Jane's name or Mel Melissa's, or maybe I can read those now, but I'll forget them unless they're in print. Oh, I can't hear you. Graham, you're yeah. on silent. You're on mute. Sorry, it's my turn to be on mute. I'm always telling other people about that. <laughs> Uh, certainly, we can collect everybody's name and email uh, address in the chat box and get it to you. Uh, can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes. Karen. Excellent. I can read from my tree at the same time. Here we okay. go. So let's go back. So I'll just follow it through to my to the hassles. It's not going to show me. It's going to be naughty. So I've got Alice Mary Shelley. And then she goes back to Charles Shelley and Charles Shelley then goes back to William Shelley and Susanna. So going forward, we've got William Shelley and Susanna Hassel. Yes. And then our next relationship off that is, so their child, Charles Shelley, 18 oh, Charles. Yeah. Right. And Charles married Mary Terry. And then from that, goes down to Alice Mary Shelley, which is my mum who's with me, her great-grandmother. Great. Okay. So I'm just going to show just briefly what we have on our chart. So you're seeing here, this is the Charles that Karen's just referred to. Ah, yes. So he's one of the eight children of Susanna Hassel and William yes. Shelley. And she has oh. descended from the Charles line. Right. But I don't know that we have the other information below that. And but that's where we can gather some from Karen when she has yeah. the time. Yes. yes. Well, I if can... we leave that on a minute, can you? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. good. No, uh, uh, yes, go on speaking. Um... Yeah, I can um, get you copies of the portions of the trees that I've done. And I've got Family Tree Maker, so I can probably share with you easily um, what okay. I've got. I call it a fluid document, though, because it's never 100% 100, 100 correct. <laughs> they never are. <laughs> no. They are. Um, but it, I, um, is most of yours on that chart that Graham gave us recently? Um, I'm on a teeny tiny iPhone, so oh. I'll have to have a better, better no, look at fair that. enough. No, no, <laughs> not to show me now. I'm just asking yeah. whether you need to. Yeah, yeah. Sit. Okay. So I know um, when I spoke with Jean, which was about 20 years ago, we just kind of fell in touch with each other at that stage mm. in Brisbane, um, that she didn't know that Alice Mary Shelley had had any children. Oh. Um, so, that would, so she probably has a couple of generations back, but we've grown a bit since then, so I can update all that as well. Oh, that's going to be a big contribution. Thank you. That's all right. Now we're from, right, so my line's from James in the middle there. Yeah. Good, that um, was another question I wanted to check. So you're from James. Definitely, yes. yes, because he married his cousin, which is probably where the genetics went right. <laughs> 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 he married his cousin, yeah. um, yes, um, Mary Mansfield, who was the daughter of the Reverend um, Thingamy Mansfield, who did lots, who's, who's well known. When you when you read about him in the Australian biography, etc., so he had lots of children and most of them died. Unlike what I heard from Anne Hassel's line, we seem to be much much healthier. Anyway, yeah. while we're here now, and we've got this in front of us, is any more of you can tell us who you are descended from on this row, this this row of of eight. And I think that you and Karen and her mother, who's online, Heather, are the only uh, ones from this family line. The rest of us are from other family lines. So yes, it's very few. You mean, gosh, but uh, the only ones from Suzanne. All those children she had, and where the rest of them have hardly, have hardly, hardly appeared, have they? Mm. Ah, so we may get nothing from Elizabeth Lucy. That Lucy, that as a third William is there, ah, oh. and Robert, and that Susanna, and that who doesn't have an H on her, and that Julius. You I mean we're missing all those, are we? Well, perhaps somehow they're going to turn. Some of that's going to turn up. 
I think that's how just um, incrementally we we find people and we we learn yes. about yeah. the various generations and and get stories yeah. of their lives. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, cool. quite. Hmm, interesting. Well, I see if we you've got to hear. Um, yes, James Shelley. So then there are so many other sites online now. For example, on, on my screen, I've got Wikitree online. I've looked up yeah. Jane Shelley. Yes. Uh, well, that's an 830, a different. Oh, there is a whole Shelley website, yes. Oh, there's a Shelley website. Oh, they've been for a long time, yes. Okay. There's a whole Shelley website, okay. yes. All right. Which is fairly up to date, I think. Oh, well, how do I know? I only know my line. <laughs> and what can you tell us about your grandparents on this line? On James's line, on our oh, line, right? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Well, my, they're all yeah, very different, sort of Parramatta way. Um, my grandfather, Darcy Shelley, mm -hmm. who's yeah, who's this? Um, he was a he was a, yes, a wine and spirit merchant. He was the captain of the first New South Wales hockey team. And later, but I've told you this, I think. Yeah, I've told you. I've certainly told Jean this. I think she's put it in her in her last you know, printed book, which is great. It got squeezed in. Um, and then later he was the patron for that New South Wales hockey. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't inherit that. Um, he was, well, yeah, well, oh, he, when he was retired, he was vice commodore of Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron. Which merely means you run it. I think the uh, the real commodore is is a figure head. Um, and then when they finally retired, they retired. They bought a flat right next to the the uh, yacht squadron there in Kirribilli, Sydney. Um, and so they it, it was largely a, um, a sailing club, a sailing family. I mean, um, so Darcy. Uh, he had his wife is is a Burnell, yes. And Jane there's a plaque Burnell. of one of, of her ancestors I found on the wall inside the church at Parramatta. Um, one of her, so I've got an ancestor up there on that wall too. Um, um, Darcy was very keen, yeah, very interested in the King's School and ended up on the board uh, and sent his boys there, even though they lived quite close. He sent his boys there to, to board um, until, yeah, he was on the board until his younger son got evicted from the school. Uh, and we think he probably the book had Peter had uh, probably mental health issues for sure. We're pretty sure he did but, um, and had some treatment too. And he then eventually he took his own life. And we have a series of suicides, I'm afraid, by the men on that in that line. Um, see, so that's why we have, and um, yeah, we haven't always put out on the web everything yet. Um, so Darcy, yeah, Darcy, I like Darcy. Um, his wife, Jane, she was cold to me, but that's probably because she never wanted my mother to marry her darling boy. Um, Darcy had a, was it Darcy or, or Harry? Darcy's father, Harry, who was called Henry and Harry. Um, the Hunters Hill Hospital was built around the core of their house at Hunters Hill. Uh, and the house near, next door is also, was one of their houses. So they were very active, I guess, in Sydney society, yes. And his father, Harry, he started a group, a sort of private group of Sea Scouts. That was where the sailing all began, I think. Um, So then Darcy had, was it his brother? Yes, his brother Max went to the First War, came back. Um, I think the war affected him. 
kind of landscape gardener and actually designed the garden where Lindsay Fox lives at, at the property Boomerang in Elizabeth Bay. But apparently Lindsay Fox has ripped most of it out but you can't, and put up fences around, so you can't tell what he's destroyed. But we we have got, uh, we have, it, it was written up in one of the gardening magazines, and I've, so we've got the plans, even if, <laughs> yes, he's ripped a lot of it out. Oh, well, it's his house. Um, and then later he took his own life in Adelaide. We've probably, pe now we'd think, oh, PDS, PTSD or whatever from that war. Um and then there's, oh, see, you've got to have it all in front of you, which I've sort of got, but haven't got enough, really. And then there's Uncle Norman, whom Shelley, the Shelley Ferguson's um, one. He did very well, made lots of money and an engineer inventing pumps and things that Australia needed and did very, yes, he was very bright. Um, married the daughter of a professor from America who came over to Sydney Uni to work as a professor. And then they all went off to England. So I've never met them. Um, or if we can go down there, I could suddenly spot Joyce Shelley. I did meet her just once when she was older. My aunt took me to her. She had polio and that, of course, affected her life. But she did marry and have one daughter, Rosemary. I don't know about this Joan Shelley, anything about her. That's interesting. Hmm. All right, so I was talking about, ah, yeah, Darcy. Okay. And then Uncle Eric. Oh, my mother called it. It was Uncle Eric. Come on, what do I know about Eric? Married Elma. Yeah, all right. Max, yeah. Max is the one that we think probably died of, of PTSD from serving in the war. And that's Maud Phillips, yes. They're the ones that had, there's a rosemary. They had a daughter, pretty sure. I've, it's on my tree. Anyway. Oh, yes. The, the intro, all right. So here's Norman right over here, married this Lindsay. Lillian Pell. And there's a really, my cousin Frank's come up with some really interesting story about her love of dresses and things in London. <laughs> it was quite a fun story. And they had Guy and Jay Shelley. All right. So that sort of, where are we now with, with Darcy? Right, so yes, we haven't got any more there. Uh, I guess I'll tell you, um, because if you go digging around, we don't. Darcy had my father. Okay, that, that's all right, John, of course. Um, and then John had three wives, so I'm the product of the first. Uh, the second one is the real problem. And he would really come and harass a lot of the family if he knew what, 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 what I do and who I am. So we sort of, he's only just a bit younger than I. So until he dies, um, he's re be really verbally, verbally abusive. Uh, he used to have a website, so we know what he could say. Um, and he was a product of the second marriage. And the third marriage came to Canberra after, he died, after John died. And I, I know her, and she's got two very fine boys with, um, and they've got fine boys. So they're all boys, these grandchildren in this gen of my generation. Um, so will someone ask to want like to ask me any questions? Look, uh, and thank you for that. Uh, we do have a question from James. James, would you like to ask Anne? And um, firstly, I, I love your passion, your, your passion for genealogy uh, and all the rest of it. Um, uh, there's one thing that did pick up my attention. Uh, and was it you before who said you knew uh, Jenny Farrell at the Royal Sydney Yacht Squadron or was that somebody else? Somebody else, I'm afraid. Yes. No, not I. Okay. The Royal Sydney, the, so. the Royal Sydney yeah. Yacht Squadron comes up again. Um, yeah, and, that's interesting. But, why I'm interested, last night I had a North Sydney boys uh, dinner uh, and there was three of us at the table who were talking about boats and North Sydney Yacht Squadron. I used to sail down there years ago. Could you please run that connection uh, back uh, you mentioned? You mentioned someone in your family had My grandfather. having the flag. 
Oh, so that was your grandfather? Yes. Uh, was this the, the Commodore? Vice, well, like a vice the, Commodore, yeah, which is Vice the Commodore of the Royal Senior. And his interest yes. followed on to the extent he had a apartment next to the squadron. Yes, yes, they did retire there. Well, I think they had to downsize too like, at that time um, because they were living in Rose Bay before that. And, uh, yeah. and did yeah. you visit him from time to time down there? Yes, I was able to the visit him and actually, yes, and, and had the, the joy of, of going on the yacht for a, um, a couple of times in the daytime. Yes, yes, but I'm the only one that you, almost you, all my cousins that never, learned, never had the chance to learn to sail. My fa original father so, taught so, my cousins to sail, but not because I didn't know him. You were fortunate to have that opportunity because it's a, it's a nice spot. It's a wonderful spot. No. Fascinating. Yes. Oh, it was. And I did learn to, yes, I did learn to row. It aged about, I don't know, 11 or something, to row the little boat out, what do you call the tinder? No, the, the boat out from the from the clubhouse the, to the yacht. Yes. I learned to row with yeah, you, no. you, you, sort of th three or four men there. Yes. <laughs> That's, that's all I learned. Very interesting. Uh, thanks very much. Oh, Thank a connection. You. That'd be great. Mm -hmm. Yes, all right. That was the only question. Oh, and yes. yes. Hello, I'm Jane. Um, I'm interested in your comment. Was it Harry Shelley you mentioned and the Hunters Hill Hospital? Yes, yes. yes. So did you say the hospital was built around his house? Yes, and I actually talked to my aunt once and she said, oh, yes, I think this was the ballroom. Um, <laughs> but I didn't know how much she was not re remembering and how much she was. So, yes. Um, that, you know the name that, of the house? That's, there's a Hunters Hill Historical Society and I went in there. Yes, yes, I know it. I've been and in. when he died, he took his life. Yeah, there's, they've got one story and we've got another story of how he died. Oh, and you don't know the name of that house that, that they built the hospital? Did they pull it down, do you know? No, I don't think they did. I think they added to, uh, turned it into a hospital and must have added a lot to it. No, I think some of it's still there from what I've read oh, about. My son had his orthodontic, I think he had his four molars out there. But Oh, did he? Four. But, my, and there was... but my interest is um, my grandparents... Mm -hmm. uh, they live next door in Yulberti, which is now taken over by the education department. And I was there oh. looking at that house, taking my children and my granddaughter there. And when you said, did you say, uh, my notes say, did it say Harry, he built a house next door to the hospital as well? Did you he say? Build, well, it's, there's one right next to the hospital, a lovely sort of, I've got, yeah, I have got a photo of it. Oh. Um, typical sort of a really early one with a, Oh. straight front and looking really old but it's obviously well lived in but there's another house around the corner probably backing onto the hospital that my aunt swore they lived in so um you know i have got some material on those houses yes yes oh. i have are, are you have you heard of the house called your Bertie? i think so Two yes i'd have to look it up again yes oh, i know i can look it up again I was the eldest of the grandchildren. I stayed there many times and my dad was born there. Um, really? How do you spell that? I'll write it down. Um, E-U-L-B-E-R-T-I-E. -E. So that oh, came down through um, Marth and Marsden. So I'm related also to Samuel Marsden. And oh, are you? Through Marth and Marsden <laughs> and the Betts. Ah, that's all that came together there because they moved from, um, uh, let me think, uh, the Betts, no, what's his name, Edward Betts, he moved, for, he was the superintendent of Gladesville Hospital. Ah. And he and Catherine Elizabeth moved into your Bertie and had my grandmother, one child, Marion Hope. Um, oh, other hopes that's where yes, yes. Very ah, well I'll look up what I know of those houses yeah. definitely but, and get back to you but, about that yeah so Graham are we able to swap emails or something I'd be very interested to um find out more sure. about the Hunters Hill Hospital and that connection yes. they must have all known each other 
could, could I ask that everybody who's um, on the call now and, and wants to just put their email address so that we can put it, I mean, I've got most of your email addresses, but it would help Anne as well. Hmm. Um, we, we Only have, if you're happy about that. Only if you're happy with it. And then in the chat, then uh, anybody can pick that email address up from the chat box or oh. I can send it to you. So uh, I do that later, do we? I haven't well, you, can do it, you can do it now if you, you want. You just oh, open up the chat while we're talking. Yeah, and right. Just type in your email. Um, we yeah. have most people's email who are on the call now, apart from Karen, but we're in touch with Karen yeah. by the Facebook page. Mm, I can't see right. Oh, there. Okay. But I think Anne wanted to be in touch with Karen, with you, if you want to share your email address with her. so that Who's uh, Karen? Uh-uh. On the iPhone 13. Oh, you're iPhone. Karen in the green? Yes. Thanks. Well, I would, can I just add about the hospital? There's a park, the park right beside it that's called the Harry Shelley Memorial Park. So oh, even though he took his that. life, he obviously was, uh, you know, I think, oh. yes. He, uh, and, and it used, when I was, the one time I went to see it as a young adult. See, my mother didn't, wouldn't have, didn't want me to learn anything about all this. Um my mother, uh, yes, and it was very plain, and it just had this huge sign at the back saying Harry Shelley Memorial Park, and nothing mm -hmm. didn't. But the second time I went, when I took my aunt much later, mm -hmm. um, after my mother died, uh, it, they'd done really done something with that park, and it looked good. Mm. Yes. Well, I know that park very well. <laughs> yes, well, whether he he may have donated this land before he died, it's quite possible, because it was right next to the house. Mm. Maybe it was his land, but anyway, it's still there, the, the park. So I hope someone doesn't take it away. <laughs> take it away. I, I just want to share, I don't know, I found an old building which is at the hospital. I don't mm. know if this is the building that you're talking about, Anne. Yes, that's the one. It's, oh. it's just about me. So, um, it, well, I never read. Lunatic Asylum? Yeah. It's, no. It's, no, I think it was just a one-story one, but it looks that's similar. That's unfair of them to say it, but it, it, it is. For mental health. No. That would be interesting if it is. Yeah. So um, oh, I found yeah. those images um, under that's Hunters Hill Hospital, and you see. Oh, you that's see, before it was. That's oh. the original hospital, was it? You just had. Well, there's all different images for. This is called the Priory, Gladesville. And uh, so it might be, you know, oh, that's the Priory, the Priory. So I think it's going to be that that building there. Really? And uh, this is building at Gladesville Hospital. That might be an, an Oh, that Gladesville building. was a lunatic asylum. I know. Yeah. Yes, yes, I know that one very well. Okay. I think. So it's different. Yes, to it's right on a main thing. road, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Well, very archaic description, though. Lunatic <laughs> <laughs> asylum. No, yeah, I'm just trying to find it, but that's interesting. We keep wow. on finding these historic buildings that are associated with the various family members, mm. and uh, we just wish they'd kept all that land and passed it on rather than. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I probably got some of that information from the Hunters Hill Historical Society. Oh, I must and, go back. There. Yeah. Do you? Yes. Uh, you, you, you have been collecting your family history. Uh, you have an interest in it. Uh, uh, do you have um, photo albums? or Because you've told us about not only your <laughs> grandparents, but you've told us about, you know, some of your grandfather's uh, brothers and, you know, yes. you know about that generation. What are you going to do with this knowledge? Well, I just, you know, see, I don't go back and research, but I, I, I collect anything that comes my way that someone else is offering. I do that. Um, <laughs> So hopefully to part, you know, pass it on. And I've certainly got one daughter, or well, both daughters would be interested um, when they have time. Um, but you some of this is in, in, you know, some of this is all in this book of genes. Okay. You know, I was very lucky that she put in that bit that I told her about, about Darcy. I'm very fortunate that that got in that one. Because uh, she just didn't, you know, these things are in trove quite a bit too, aren't they? Yes. Yes. Um, and Eric, you will definitely, yes, um, find if you look up the Australian Dictionary of Biography, yes. And, uh, but more and more, they're adding more and more names to the Dictionary of Biography. So it's surprising what who you might find there. Yes, yes. Um, uh, but this is not a so of interest to, to some of you here, so I, I should stop talking and perhaps you, you've got something exciting to tell us about your line. 
Uh, Karen, I think that's an invitation to you and to your mother to tell us about, you know, your parents, grandparents, what and what you know back through the line. Um, it, it, it's something that you, you know, quite easily because it's your family's story, but it'll be new for the rest of us who are online tonight. And you just have to unmute and then... Just see what we can remember because I haven't got anything with me, of course, traveling. Sure, sure, sure. So let's see, Mum, what can you remember? So, if, if you could describe her parents and just tell us what they did, where they lived, because this will be new for us and it, it adds to our understanding of. So, Mum's parents, um, the line we go back or the part that we go through with Alice Mary Shelley um, were mostly associated with Korowa and Malwala, New South Wales. On the on the and Yarrawonga, mm -hmm. um, all farming, it's, mum. Yes, all farming. All farm, a farming background. Um, I think probably had quite a tough life, um, from what I, I've been been learning. Um, so mum comes down then from Alice Mary Shelley, that which is the Hassel link down to um, her branch, which is then Lily and Watts and then married into a Campbell family. Um, I did hear, um, was it Jean mentioned Samuel Marsden um, and just wondered whether she was aware that there's a Samuel Marsden school in New Zealand. No, I didn't know that. Oh, they yeah. love it over there. Yeah. So that's, um, I, um, I think I follow their school on the Facebook page. It used to be oh. just a girls' school, I think, and then it's co-ed now. Okay. Yeah, and I and only found that quite by accident when my husband had a job offer in New Zealand and I was researching what, what I was going to be keeping me busy over there and came across the school. Yeah, so um, I think it's in north, the south of the North Island, so not too far Is out that, of uh, Auckland. Oh, okay. Well, there might be several master's schools. There's there's a master's yeah. school mm. for girls in Wellington because we live near it and it's in a suburb called Marsden Village. <laughs> Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That could be that could be the same one. I know it was yeah. sold. It it's in Wellington. Hands. Yeah. I didn't know it had gone co-ed, but uh, yeah, I think it might have been sold. If if it's the same one, might be different. The Marsden's so big in New Zealand, more than yeah. Same. But yeah. So you were telling us about your mother's parents. So mum's parents, um, mum's. So my grandmother passed away last year, um, ninety six in February. Victoria. February. Oh, February this year. I've lost track. February this year um, in Victoria. So they all sort of stayed around that Victoria area, Victoria, New South Wales border. Um, hang on, I've got a 15-year-old giving me instructions 16. of where he's going. 16, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what, what sort of farming, Mum? All uh, dairy farming. Dairy farming. Yeah, my yeah. father was a shearer as well, contract shearer. Yeah, and then do you know remember much about your grandparents? My grandparents. So did you call her Dolly? Was it Dolly? Mums. They all died before, well before I was born. Yeah. Um, I know she had lots of twins. She had three sets of twins. My mother was a twin. <gasps> she, actually, she actually had four sets. She died giving the, she had an asthma attack during the birth of the fourth set. Oh. Um, they were all non-identical, so all most were all all non-identical. And um, and she was quite young when she died. She, was, she died in nineteen thirty-seven. Yeah, so she was about forty when she passed away. And the interesting thing too is um, all the women seem to have longevity. They have all lived into their nineties. But all the men have died through mishap. Um, this is mum's family, like killed at the wall, um, hit by a drunk driver, hit by a car when he got off a tram in Melbourne, um, misadventure. Um, oh, except for one, the eldest set of twins. Um, he was born with a hole in the heart, and of course they never, they didn't have the technology they've got now to. Um, treat that or whatever he died when he was about nine um the lady you're talking about was it jean or jane stewart um jean stewart, jean yeah. stewart i think she lived at kenmore park here in brisbane she might still be there no she... sorry sorry 
No, no. Her, she lives in that, Canberra, but she used okay. to be in prison. I'm surprised she's yeah. not on this tonight. Um, I can remember when we went to see her, we supplied some incident. information to her um, about mum's um, uncles that belonged to the brass band and, and a photo of um, Grandma Shelley's grave at, at the cemetery. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then um, so back from Dolly, who had all the twins, mm. that goes back to Alice Mary Shelley, who married James Lilly. Do you remember? She was passed before. Yeah, she passed. So the rest were all passed before grandma or well, mum was born. Um, I think I've got mostly some photos of headstones and things like that when we've been, because I think a couple, Dorothy May Watts, who was born Dorothy Lilly, but her mum was Alice Mary Shelley, um, she had... Um, a couple of marriages mm. yeah even though even though she died really young she had a couple of marriages so a couple of surname changes in there just to throw us mm. but um yeah we're still learning learning about those bits and and um reading them material which probably was the very early uh, so I, I met Jean I'm trying to think I was living not far from her in Brisbane so I sold that house in 2003 and moved in in 2000. So it must have been around 2000 that we met with her and she gave us a copy of um, um, a photocopied to us a book and it was bound with a little Spyrax on the side. So that was probably her earlier version or early version of the, the books that she's since obviously added to because she was quite excited. I think we were a bit like the ghosts that just sort of popped up because as far as she was aware, no one had descended from Alice Mary Shelley. Um, so we were able to add that little bit. But I've got some more generations I can add to her for her now. Um, yeah, so, but I'll be able to get everything that I've, once I'm back back in Tassie, um, I'll be able to um, to give you all copies of, of what I've got and anything that I've found or just names and and photos oh that's that's Karen that's fantastic uh, you know your your camera's off at the moment so we're hearing oh, you, but, um, I, I keep <laughs> you must be doing really well because <laughs> every oh, 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 you're still there can you still oh, we're, here? we're here yeah yeah, yeah. there, you yeah. Go. That's there it. we are yeah, there. Yeah. it's really different on a phone because usually I've got a laptop yeah. and, or a Computer. No, you've done really well. I think everybody <laughs> understands that you, you're travelling well, at the moment. I'm looking very, I'm looking very tired because I've gone from 12 degree heat to 28. Right. So right. <laughs> I'm not doing too bad. Right. Um, <laughs> now, we but, were hoping that this would be the first uh, of a series for each family mm -hmm. line just to meet people and uh, then maybe come back early in the new year and have mm -hmm. another session. Yeah. And for those who want to share photos or share some stories, we can do yeah. it again and we can get some more cousins in. Uh, yeah. You know, so we, you can't get it all done in one night. So this has been terrific no. tonight to to hear from Anne, and because we've had Anne in our sessions before, but not to talk about your family, and 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 yeah. also now to meet Karen and Heather as well. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, I'll be able to ring in some more if I can get in touch with those that I've got on any list at home. That that'd be great. Um, look, uh, before we finish tonight, I wonder if there's any other questions for Anne or for Karen, Heather, uh, about the stories they've told or about their future interests in, in doing some family research. Graham, I'm just trying to send my email. You said put in the chat. Yeah. yeah. It says down the bottom to everyone and then I typed it in. Does and that show up or do I have to press something? <laughs> it, it Jane, press enter. Once you've written it in, press then on. press enter. Yeah. Mine didn't hey. go. Oh, there it is. Oh, that's it. I had the same problem, Jane. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Learn it. It. All right, that's it. Great. Thanks. That's good. Now, we haven't heard from Melissa. Oh, hello. <laughs> How are you? You've done Hi. very well, Anne. You, you've, you've, are you very involved in understanding about your family history or...? No, I just, I just, I just, I just collect stuff, okay, and try and, and try and, and try and put it in different branches in different boxes. Yes, right. Well, it's been very interesting. Um, but your, what, where's your, where do you fit? Fit? 
Uh, I'm from the Samuel uh, Hassel and, and Lucy Marlham line. Uh, and Roland, of course. Oh, Lucy Milam. Yeah. There's a, yeah, I found a Milam grave, the only fancy one, in um, in Berrydale. Hmm. Yes. Right. Berrydale. He had, must, he had a farm there, but no one locally could tell me anything about him except that he might have gone broke. <laughs> Sorry. But I would have a photo of that. Yes, it's the only fancy um, tomb in, in the, it's actually called the Jezeric, which is a, a long word, uh, but that is the that is the cemetery for the town of Berrydale, mm. which is I'll south of Kirk. one day. Yes, you won't have trouble finding him in the Church of England section because it's down the bottom. Yes, David. Well, that's James has got his hand up there. James, you're on mute. Um you're on mute and why you're on mute yeah, thank you <laughs> james james milam hassel that's married one. Anne isabella hume and had 15 children mm. and he passed away in berrydale snowy mountains region in 1896 oh. yeah well you can easily find i know it, it, the, find that's it. where the interest is coming and it's come through these discussions that my grandfather sorry my great-grandfather also got married in berrydale i think i was talking to you david uh, i i would so I'm a little bit taken back. I also have a personal interest in the Snowy Mountains. Um, right. How did you end up in Berrydale Cemetery? Was it following that graveyard or tell me more? No, no, I was the rector there. Oh, goodness. And you oh, haven't told us about oh, your own wow. life and career. And uh, you know, yeah. well, you don't want to. Please tell. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. I think you've yes, been given for, an invitation um, there. Let's years. talk about that. Yes. Okay, go tell us about that. Yeah. Um, well, all right. I trained as a scientist, actually. So collecting material comes in, actually. Um, and came to, went to Canberra straight away and, and worked for CSIRO uh, just with a basic science degree, and that was great. Then I you know, got married, became the housewife, as people did in the sick 60s or so. Um, but I married, um, yeah, my husband was also at CSRO and he was a superb skier. So that became, skiing is, is our family sport. And then um, I had this calling, sense of calling, when the Anglican Church was certainly not letting women in. Um, but I joined a few other women and we studied. So when that came in, I was in that first tranche of women what, to be ordained priest. And uh, so after two years as a deacon here in Canberra, I was sent to Tumbarunga of all places. Um, and then I came back because I was very isolated there, really, by myself. And then I, when the parish of Berrydale and Snow Mountains opened up, being a skier, um, I went there. So that's why I did burials and things at, at this Jezeric Cemetery. And, and also the loco one, which, uh, but I don't think there are any of our people there. And also Jindabine Cemetery. Yeah. Yes. Amazing. And then I sort of, then I retired and got busy. <laughs> More busy. <laughs> and I still work a bit as a, just honorary. And cross country skiing, yes. I um, I was sort of one of the early women in those those races too, and and that was that was good fun. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So yes, I love the snow mountains. Yes. Yes. Uh, and maybe we should correspond. Um, I've just posted you a, a message. Uh, there's two areas of interest. Uh, I spend a lot of time. I, I've been for 45 years involved in the scientific instrument industry supplying CSIROs and ANU with all their research gizmos. Uh, so my first question is, what uh, divisions of CSIRO were you working at? I was in entomology. Entomology. Oh, wonderful. Doing biochemistry <laughs> for, for a couple of insect physiologists. What, what year, circa? Oh, oh I year? went there in 63 um, till my daughter was almost born at 69. Okay. My association started from about 75 for the next 40 years. Oh, right. So, yes. Well, yeah, my husband was, yes. It was in all, all the chromatography instrumentation. Yeah, and, and things like that. So, great. My curiosity has been partially satisfied on that. Uh, <laughs> my other 
interest that's really got me going. Um, I, I'm involved in the Parish of Historical Society uh, uh, and uh, fascinated. Uh, yeah, say no right. more, say no more. In, in a nutshell, uh, what, what years did you start skiing? When did you start? What, oh, when I came to Canberra. Um, so that's 63, yes. 1963. Okay. I'll, I'll send you an email. But if you've got that yeah. book of the history of Parisha, I'm in the back of that. Okay, okay, I've got about a dozen books. About, uh, yeah, what? it's the only one with, with some things like the Paddy Palin results in the back. Um, got, so rather than, oh, what, I don't know, my daughter's got it. I, I, I can't remember the title, but it's about five years ago. No, in the last five years, I guess. Hmm. You know, a bit of the Southall Kelly's book. That, that's the um, uh, hopeless Highway to Heaven. Remembering authors. No. What's it called? No. What was it called? Highway to Heaven. Highway to Heaven. It might be. Uh, I'd have to check it when I at my daughter's house here. Okay, and you think you you're and that, that came out about five years ago. Yes. Uh, yeah. It sounds like the same one. And you say your whereabouts? In You're the, in the, the Paddy Palin the... results. Okay. I won the first two. I've got it. I'll look tonight. Okay. That's great. Fascinating. <laughs> that's good. Deviation. Well, that's why I went, to, yeah, it was half your parishes down that way, it cold as it was. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Melissa, and... I think we cut you off some way, did we? Oh, I was just going to ask, when did you, What at what age did you study for the ministry? Ah. Uh... Um, 43, I suppose. 43. And, and it was um, for the Anglican Church or? Yes, yes. It was the Anglican Church. Okay. Which meant I was not in Sydney. <laughs> right. Because that. Yeah. Could not I'm sure there's, there's many people in the Hassel family that have, are in the ministry still today and, and Christians and, and serving God today, you know? Oh, yes, there are. We'll be less and less now, of course, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Amazing. People are funny, aren't they? <laughs> yes, Jane, oh, Alison. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little something about Susanna. Well, no, I don't know any more than is in you know, Jean's Got or um, Graham gave you probably at the beginning. Right. No, you see, I haven't. No, I haven't. Uh, less, uh, bit too busy without looking back. But I, but I'm reading books now. Oh, I'm reading a historical novel at the moment. Believe it or not, called Benevolence. Have any of you read that? And it starts with the native institution that William and Elizabeth started, and and it's. So although it's based on some historical facts, it is definitely fiction. So it has the original William, not, not very good, and Elizabeth's really nice to the, to the children. Um, so it's about a girl, it's, it's based on the possible life of a girl who was at that institution who did quite well, and then the ups and downs of her terrible life. And But someone recently, I've only met recently, has... Um, one Aboriginal person, a woman in their family history who was definitely at the native institution called Peggy, or they called her Peggy, um, and ended up marrying a convict and, and was quite well respected in the town of Yass when she died. She was even allowed to hold the land when her husband died, which I think would have been really strange then. So that's but that's interesting too. Mm -hmm. but, uh, and, has, and that was that Anne Hassel comes into that. I've got, I've got a copy of this sort of monograph. Um, of, of being good to Peggy. <laughs> so, yeah, so you, you, it's come along. Things come along that you weren't expecting. That yes, can add, but, add to the history. Yeah, and so much more to discover. And there's nothing about Susanna in, in, in that one, no. It'd be nice to know more. We need some letters or something. Yeah. We're looking. We're searching for them. I've certainly got nothing from further back than my grandfather, really. Well, we might thank everybody for being online. Thank you, Anne, for convening that. And uh, 
Sold off. Um, nice to meet some new family members as mm. well. So we'll bring this session to a close. Mm. And we just thank everybody for being online and bring us a little bit closer to the story of Susanna Hassel and William Shelley. So thanks very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye.